All right, everybody, it's Chris from Out West with Chris, and I'm here with my brother-in-law, and he's going to be doing a little stippling of this uh, um, pistol. Glock G43, single stack 9mm. Um, I do stippling for function, not for looks, so some of the fancy wood patterns and star patterns I don't mess with doesn't really help any. So I use a grease pencil, turn around, mark. A lot of times I'll do the front part of the finger guard, or the side part, the front and the bottoms just for better grip. I will not be doing the mag drop. Sometimes I'll do that as well. And on this one, I'm gonna try saving the Glock emblem. So this one also has an extension on the mag that I won't be doing. So your grease pen is that? Is the white line. Gotcha. That's, that's the general. This side and this side are pretty close right now. I'll spend some extra time making sure that both sides match. Then I'll come all the way around the back. As far as the minor texturing on it, that'll melt away, so I'm not worried about that either. And it's got slight indents on both sides. Those I'll texture right up and over. Nice thing about this pencil is uh, a lot of painters use them. If you make a mistake, you can just wipe it off with water and start all over. When you start melting, it basically melts, so you don't have to worry about trying to wash it off and it doesn't get stuck in the stippling. Oh, cool. So, makes it pretty easy. Awesome, um, so you're gonna show us kind of your process. Let's take a look at what tool you're using. I am, I picked up at a local hardware store, just a basic Weller WSB 25WB wood burning kit. Comes with various tips, it's got a hot knife, couple different shapes. I use the fine point, it works best. They also have this smaller tip, it's a little too rounded, doesn't get a real good penetration and it wants to open the hole up too much. Um, I played around with a bunch of scrap or spare AR grips, Magpul mags, various composites and plastics. Each one acts a little bit different. Some take a little more pressure to get the tip to break the surface and then the plastic melts really quick. Others, just even steady pressure. Um, you can hold hold the tip in the plastic a little bit, get that piece hot, and when you pull out, you get a little bit of residual plastic coming up. So there's a lot of little things to play with and check. One good tip is I run a towel with some water on one end. Sometimes you'll get some plastic that sticks to the tip of the of your soldering iron or whatever you're using. Use the, the wet rag to get some of that excess plastic off and it'll help keep your holes consistent. All right, so we've commandeered uh, my mom's sewing room. This is my mom's sewing room. She's a quilter. So <laughs> she's got all sorts of stuff here. Um, we're going to go ahead and do a little stippling on this and show you how it's done. Okay, so a lot of people will go in and cut an outline or hot knife an outline of where they're going. I generally don't. I start in the middle of my section and work my way out and then I just kind of build a line. I don't like, if you start trying to do dots perfectly in a line and one's off, it looks really bad. Whereas if you don't make them in a straight line and you just build up to it, it right. seems to look a lot better cosmetically. That's about the only cosmetic thing I really do. So try and stay straight up and down. If you go angled, you get different grips. You just kind of push down and go to the depth you want. It is a slow process. If you have thin spots, you can go back. It all melts out. It will increase the diameter of the grip just a hair as that plastic pulls up. And you can kind of hear it and you'll get to where you, you recognize the noise that you're looking for as it kind of singes into that plastic. I'm trying to be quiet so you guys can hear the little sizzle. Pretty cool. So you're just going in a circle around it. Yeah, and once I start getting into areas, I might break this way for a while and then come up this way, take a break, kind of clean some of the excess buildup off. So one thing you'll notice is that there's a little puff of smoke that comes off from the plastic burning. If you have little kids, try and keep them out of the room. If you have a small fan, it helps. Um, 
recommend not breathing it because it is burning plastic. So it's not that great for you. That's why I stayed back. Um, I'm gonna point out a couple things. Let's see if I can do this. So if you look, you can see where the holes are pretty consistent through here. There's a dead spot, there's a dead spot. When you first start off, you'll end up with a lot of really glossy areas, which are the plastic that hasn't been melted, but it's in the middle of your pattern. Don't worry about it at this point. You can always go back. I highly recommend starting really light-handed so your holes may not be as deep. Do a section and, if, and then kind of feel it, and it will be more aggressive when it's all done versus a small patch but you can always go back. So it's kind of like cutting wood. Cut a little bit, check it, cut a little bit, or melt a little bit, check it. You can always go deeper, but you can't add to it. So, and then sometimes you'll end up in a pattern, like you saw me kind of start in a circle, and then I just start going random. I find that doing straight random patterns doesn't give your eye a line to follow, so then it kind of looks out of place. If you do see a spot where you have like, a, an arc and you keep going in the same way and you want to get rid of it just kind of randomly hit with the tip and it'll kind of break that line up and blend it into the rest of the stippling so as you can see i left the glock emblem went around that the mag release i go right up to the edge but not at the edge and i let the curl from the stipple piece kind of fold over just that little bit if for some reason, and I check this all the time to make sure nothing hangs up because you do not want to affect the function of the weapon. If you find that you did go too far and it won't let it come back up, take an X-Acto knife or razor blade and just gently shave straight down in that cut and it'll trim that little bit of plastic out. This grip is not for everybody. Some people like the way the grips are right out of the box, which is fine. It really locks the pistol into your hand, gives you a lot better control for follow-up shots. If you're one of those people that uses the stick-on sandpaper type grip, this will go, you'll like this. I also shoot with gloves at times. This is awesome with a good pair of gloves. Really locks the pistol in your hand. So as you can see, I'm finished. Didn't do the underside. I wiped off the pencil with just the damp part of the rag that I had. It comes off real easy. Um, done enough of these. I didn't have a ton of touch up to do. I keep a mag, it is empty. No upper on it anyway. Everything looks good. Took the knife, just scraped the edge a little bit to catch any of the burrs and flashing that comes off. Um, $10 kit from your hardware store. Play with it a little bit. I highly recommend playing with something prior to doing a pistol. An AR mag, something, even a grip extension. Each plastic's a little bit different. This one is a lot softer than what my XD was, so it went a little bit quicker. Couple tips, things to remember. Color pencil, grease pencils work great because it comes off real easy. Mark where you want to go. A lot of times I do the sides and the front for a good grip. I'll even do a pad here to help keep the barrel down. Sometimes I'll even do texture here just so I know, just texture feel for being off trigger. Um, gives me control of it as well. Couple things to consider, the type of holster you're running. If you're running in the waistband, sometimes you don't want to do up real high because it will rub. Um, if you're running leather holsters, sometimes they grip a little bit in a leather holster. Kydex, not so much because it's so slick and it's gripping in this part anyway. Start light, you can always go back and touch up. You can always go deeper, but you can't add the plastic back. Give it a shot. If you know somebody that has it, see if they'll take you out shooting. Try it, see if you like it or not. I prefer this over just about anything else. Um, and if you're not comfortable doing it, feel free to look around. There's a ton of places to do it. All right, everybody, thanks for watching the video. And thank you to my brother-in-law for, um, you know, showing us how he stipples these uh, pistols. And, yeah, the, you can do a lot of different stuff with uh, 
a little wood burning kit and stippling and it adds some texture so pretty cool thank you um again for showing You're everybody welcome. if you like the video guys please click the thumbs up button be sure to subscribe and as always thanks for getting out west with chris